much as educating um, children um, in school is uh, crucial, is very important, um, educating our children from home is just as much important. Yeah. So uh, it is very, uh, as parents, uh, or if you're going to, uh, if you're going to be parents, it's very important to teach your children um, self-value and uh, respecting one another, you know, because I, I, I really believe that education starts from home. Yeah. And one point which I, uh, I feel a need to highlight is uh, violence, or domestic violence is uh, everybody's business. Yeah. So when you... It is very common, uh, even in, in Singapore, when people know that their, their neighbors get beaten, or you know, the truth, neighbors' children get beaten, they just shut up their mouth because they think it's, it's people's business. I shouldn't interfere. That's a very wrong mind, uh, mindset which we have to change. Yeah, we have to be a little bit capable. We have to be uh, a little bit busybody. Yeah, um, to save someone. I have, uh, I have my clients who have. Uh, uh, passed away and all that uh, due to violence. Yeah, so uh, we don't only um, provide them with options, and then if they ref if they refuse to listen, we shun away from them. No, it is a very long process. The recovery process is a very very long one. So do not give up on um, your family or friends who who are abused or who has been. Uh, whining or speaking to you, you know, don't give up on them. And um, you know, if uh, I also wish to um, to see that we need a lot and a lot of jobs for these women. We need to understand that they need to take time off to attend to court hearings and all that. So you know, this is um, I think uh, not many companies um, um, are that uh, uh, understanding. Uh, yeah. So you know, usually when com when companies, what I experience is when companies knows that uh, this lady is, uh, and, you know, they have court orders to go and all that. Oh, I, you know, it cuts down productivity. So I don't think you, know, <laughs> you should be working here. That's the reality. So I think more and more companies should um, understand um, the ladies. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Marina. Um, I just wanted to address that about the gender stereotypes and where men are, are concerned. Because gender, again, is another social construct. How men are supposed to behave, how women are supposed to behave, is something that society somehow decides. And again, it's human construct and it can be changed. And I agree very much that men are, you know, while we address uh, stereotypes about women, we also need to address stereotypes about men. Because they are just as oppressed by it. And, and, and one of the issues is, you know, how men themselves perpetuate it because they are afraid to get out of it. And peer pressure is, is a very big problem. And I can tell a story about how when I was working in HIV, I saw a, <clears throat> one of the sort of problem pages in the newspapers. And it came from a teenage boy who wrote in to say, my friends are pressuring me to go to a sex worker. And I really don't want to but I don't know how to say no to them. And this is a very real problem in this modern times, that how do we support a boy like that, who wants to be his own person, uh, who doesn't want to succumb to this peer pressure, because he just doesn't want to, but also because today it's dangerous. It's actually dangerous. You know, so these sorts of things, we have nothing for, for, for boys like this. Because we're constantly, constantly reinforcing the type of stereotype that, that boys are supposed to be. They're supposed to be sexually experienced. You know, they're supposed to know things. They're supposed to take risks and all that. How do you protect them uh, from that? Um, <clears throat> when we, uh, when I was producing a TV program called Three R, uh, the host would also do uh, workshops in schools, in workplaces. And one of the interesting workshops we did was in uh, a Ford Motor Company, actually, because the, the boss there was a woman, and she got very uh, embarrassed one time. She took uh, guests around the factory floor, female guests, and there were all these catcalls and whistles, and, <coughs> and she was so appalled.
appalled by this. She called uh, our team in, 3R, to do a workshop with the factory workers. And what we did basically was we put the men in the shoes of women <laughs> and basically made them understand uh, what it's like to be harassed. Basically, we took the most macho one of them and, and made him walk through a lineup of, of women. First round, we told the women, don't touch him at all. Just stand there, don't touch him. And he walked like, like this. And the second round, we said to the women, now you can do what you want. <laughs> and he walked like this. So we said, why did you walk like this the second time round? said, because I was afraid. And ding, light bulb went up. And, and really, I think that men are sometimes caught up in this stereotypes of how they sort of behave. They don't realize what it feels like for the other side. So and, and one of the strategies I think we should do uh, is, is to put them in women's shoes, not literally in high heels, but to understand the, the situation. Um, but uh, meanwhile, I think in violence, I, I think, you know, violence and poverty is, is not a, 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 you know, violence equals poverty or poverty equals violence. It, it's, it's not that all the time. For example, you, you might have read a report about the violence against women in the U.S. military. How women in the U.S. military have been raped, abused, everything. Incredible levels of violence. And perhaps that's more, that's partly because of, you know, male dominance, but also perhaps a culture of violence uh, in, in some situations. <coughs> and the military is very vulnerable to doing this. I mean, you see armies, militias using rape as a, violent, as a, as a weapon of war, right? It's not because they are, have extra hormones. Uh, it's just because that's a weapon that they can use to dominate. So, you know, it, it, it's certainly not limited to poor countries. But I think, I think as a final word, it just, the, you know, there's so many, this whole mindset needs to change. And, and where I work, where I come from, where we are trying to deal with religious uh, so-called justifications for violence. I mean, we had a client who, was beaten up by the husband, kept going to the Sharia court to ask for divorce. The, the, the Sharia court just refused to take her seriously. She made 49 police reports and they still would not take her seriously until, until her brother got beaten up by her husband. Suddenly they were like, oh my God, you know, because her brother is not in the marriage and suddenly they all got excited. Only after that she got her interim protection order and then, and then it all worked. So despite our laws, that whole um, mindset is still there. And yet these are people who keep saying, we follow the way of the prophet and all that. And, and one of the <coughs> things that we're trying to say is this, the prophet never ever beat his wives, ever. So what are you saying when you say you want to follow the prophet? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I think that's a brilliant ending. And uh, perhaps just on a very uh, short note, I would like to perhaps, uh, you know, those of you who are on social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, you can actually tag One Singapore, Marina, Trina, Azra, myself, uh, to actually you know share just a little bit about the event tonight. You know, like sometimes we ask ourselves, oh, you know, what can we do? And you think of all the big things, but it is just perhaps that 140 characters tweet, you know, that could actually empower another woman. So these are like very simple things and it's available on our fingertips. And so please be empowered to actually share this with your circle of influence. And last but not least, I'd like to end with a quote by the um, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. And he actually said, men must um, teach each other that real men do not violate or oppress women and that a woman's place is not just in the home or the field, but in schools and offices and boardroom. And I think that will conclude 
very much like what some of us have actually answered tonight. So I'd like to actually um, pass um, you know a gift to um, thank our speakers. Maybe shall we give them first a round of applause? <laughs> project that to raise awareness of violence against women it's almost like 24 hours um, uh, tweeting up news about violence against women but also giving resources for where you can get help in all over the world okay